Today we're going to replace the radiator on this 2005 Toyota Highlander. Before we start work on the car, you want to make sure that the engine's cold. You don't want to open the uh, radiator cap here and then have coolant gushing out on you. Um, for this one, since there is a crack here, there's no coolant inside the radiator. We will be taking coolant out of the uh, radiator so you want to stick a something to catch the coolant. I'm going to throw it under the car. Since the engine is cold it's okay to open the radiator cap. So now to drain the radiator what you're going to do is you're going to look for this little stopcock here. Um, you're going to spin it counterclockwise. And then just drain the um, coolant. I've already drained it out here, but uh, all you have to do is twist it um, counterclockwise. A few, about maybe spin it a couple of times. You don't have to like let it all the way out. Otherwise, it'll gush all the shooting all over the ground. So we just like let it go until it drains all out. But again, this one has been drained out already. Next, what we'll do is just disconnect anything that's connected to the radiator. So we'll just disconnect this overflow tube here. And then the upper radiator hose for this one, we're just probably gonna just get, um, take out this clamp and just push it all the way back here somewhere. This is going to be the little hole that the coolant is going to be coming out of when you open the uh, cop stock on the radiator. Right. So we'll just move this radiator clamp back. And then we'll just push the whole hose back. Now when you're pulling the hose back, there may be coolant that might be flowing out from here. So just be careful and put a little bucket or something under there. But since this one, I already know it's empty. Um, and I emptied it a little bit earlier. Uh, it should be okay. But just know that there may be some coolant that's still left in the hose. Um, now since there's two fan on this Highlander, we're just going to disconnect the two uh, plugs that's going to the fan. It's going to be on one on each side of the car. Um, Now to disconnect this, what you have to do is you just have to press this button right here. Press it. It's going to be really hard, but you're going to have to press it down and then pull it out. And you're going to do the same thing for this side right here. Now you're just going to go down and just um, unplug the cable that's stuck to the fan housing. So the way to pull off this plastic uh, wire holder here is if you can get in with a flathead screwdriver, you're going to push it all the way in, you're going to turn it a little bit while pushing the uh, lower piece out. So if you're able to do that, this thing comes right out. Taking out the battery may make it easier for you to access the back of the um, radiator. And to do that, all you have to do is we're gonna take off the uh, tie downs, which here is held down by two 10 millimeters. So we just unbolt those. Now that the tie down has been taken off, we'll just disconnect the negative 
and then the positive and then we'll just lift out the battery and then that'll be easier to access the back side of the uh, radiator which to take out the front bumper looks like what we have to do is there are some uh, clips right uh, on top of the grill here, looks like there's four of them. We're just gonna pry it up with a flathead screwdriver. Then um, we're go going to go behind the wheel well. There's gonna be, looks like two here. Looks like all you have to do is probably turn it 90 degrees. And there's another one here. You can, of course, go on both sides. And also, there's probably going to be some looks like some 10 millimeters down on the bottom here where the the white bumper here it's probably gonna be like a few down there too so we'll take the front bumper off so this is how you're gonna apply off uh, pry off that little clip you're just gonna put a flathead screwdriver right below the center of the clip there and then just turn it and that should come right off um, all you have to do is grab it and just pull it straight up. You're going to do that for um, all the other clips. Now to take this piece off here, you're just going to spin it 90 degrees. Get a flathead screwdriver, turn it counterclockwise 90 degrees. And all you have to do is just pry it right off and pull it straight out. There's going to be another one down here near the bottom. If you can't get your flathead screwdriver in here, what you have to do is just turn the um, steering wheel uh, one direction and then that way the tire will go in and then you'll have a little bit more room down there. So you're gonna do it for both sides. And looks like there's one more um, bolt here. Um, it's gonna be right under just the right there. It's gonna be a 10 millimeters. So if you come up here, you can peel back the, um, the wheel well here and 10 millimeters down there on both sides. So there is going to be a total of, I believe, 10, I mean, I'm sorry, six 10 millimeter bolts that is under the bumper. So it's going to be all below there. So um, we'll just take that one off too. Well, it looks like uh, there is actually one more screw right in the center right there, If you, as you can see. It's right in the front center of the grill. So you want, it looks like it's a Phillips, so just unscrew that. Either need a, either a long Phillips or you can come from here. And if you have like some sort of 90 degrees bend, but it's pretty difficult, it's probably best just to get like a, a long um, Phillips. So just go straight down there and then um, that is one last piece that's holding it. Let me see if I can get a little clear shot. There you go. So to pull the bumper out, what you're gonna do is you just pry it out this way a little bit, and then you're gonna push the bumper forward. Now, what's holding the, what might be holding the bumper is that there is a bottom piece here. It's a little plastic clip. Uh, you can see right here. Just push it down a little bit and then push the bumper forward. If you have two people, that'll make it easier. So, but if, it's, if you're doing it by yourself, you do it a, a little bit gently and do it a little bit on each side and then just pull it out. Now, if your car just happens to have a, um, has fog lights, you don't want to pull the bumper all the way before you disconnect it. So disconnect the, the uh, fog lights. So we'll take off the center underbody plastic piece here. Looks like it's holding on with a another one of these um, clips here. Stick a flathead screwdriver and then pry that one off. And then looks like there is a um, couple of 10 millimeters below here so all we're doing is just taking this this center piece here it's just a plastic piece here because we're gonna have to access the um, the bottom portion of the radiator and the radiator hose so on the bottom of the car and near the passenger side there is going to be this cooler line here what we'll do is we'll disconnect that. Uh, you need a pair of pliers just to squeeze on that and then uh, 
We're going to pull it off and you'll need something to catch uh, the fluid that's going to be coming out. So as you can see here, the um, transmission cooler line has been disconnected. Now we'll just let the fluid drain out. So now we are on the driver's side. Here is the uh, stopcock the, where we drain the radiator fluid, the coolant. And, um, and we're going to take off the lower radiator hose. So we'll just pinch this here and then we're just going to move it up and disconnect it. Um, there may be some coolant still left in there so you know just be careful. So here you can see that the um, the transmission cooler line and the um, radiator hose has been uh, taken off. Uh, don't forget to take off this connector right here too. Uh, once we take this off, we'll go back to the top of the car and then we'll take off the two more bolts that's holding the radiator. So now uh, there's actually only two bolts that's holding the radiator. So it's going to be this one and this here. It uh, should be a 12 millimeters. And if you disconnected everything correctly, um, there may be some wires here that's been that's held on to the radiator but uh, we'll see if we have anything but if you pry everything off it should be good and then we'll be able to lift out the radiator as you can see here uh, the radiator has been taken out but there is a couple of um, cables that's still stuck on to the the back of the fan here so you're gonna use a flathead screwdriver just to pry this off and it's gonna be like another piece here the reason why we're prying that off is because it's still connected to the car it's gonna be on one side and then we didn't get this other side either so we will pry it off with a uh, flathead screwdriver and then of course this piece will just disconnect it um, just remember you don't want to you want to be extra careful with the radiator you don't want to bend the fins this one because it is old and it's broken already uh, that's why I laid it on like this but uh, you don't want to lay it on anything if uh, it's a new radiator. You don't want to bend the fins. So we're just going to get some flathead screwdrivers and just pry those uh, cables off. So the way to pull off this plastic uh, wire holder here is if you can get in with a flathead screwdriver, you're going to push it all the way in. You're going to turn it a little bit while pushing the uh, lower piece out. So if you're able to do that, this thing comes right out. Okay, so this is the radiator with the fan um, on back. What we're gonna do is we're gonna use some of the parts. So some of these bushings here, these rubber pieces we're probably gonna reuse. Um, we'll take off the fan. So here's the three bolts, one, two, three on the bottom. And then um, there's another three on top. Uh, we're probably gonna take out this. I believe this is what, temperature? Um, sensor and We'll just take all those pieces apart and we'll just put it onto the uh, the new radiator. So here's the new radiator. Uh, what you probably want to just inspect it first, real quickly, just to see if there's any bent fins or cracks, um, because it would be a hassle just to uh, put it on and later to find out that there's a crack or a leak in there. But um, most likely they probably tested already. So we'll just move all the uh, older components onto this new radiator. This is the uh, used radiator. And here is the fan on the new radiator. You can see here, we're, it doesn't come with a new radiator cap. So uh, you should just buy yourself a new radiator cap since it's cheap anyway. Um, this was a cheap radiator, so it didn't come with the, um, the cap. Um, so here is the bolt that is... Uh, those three bolt, uh, six bolts, and it, we just bolted the fan on there, and this is the center piece where it's going to hold the, um, the overflow hose. Now with this, what we, I also reused these um, these bushings, so it stops the radiator from just rattling. It's a rubber one 
kind of old, but uh, this is an old car, so I'm not going to try to find like another um, bushing here. Um, so I just reused that. Uh, this radiator came with these two, um, looks like brass pieces. So you can look at the orientation of the, um, the old one to know which uh, piece goes where. The one is a, a 90 degrees and the other one is like bent a little bit. The one that's 90 degrees is going to go to this on the right side here and then the other piece of course goes over here. So um, we'll just put that one on. Now since this is an old car and I'm reusing the uh, water temperature sensor, um, I just decided to change the o-ring on there um, just because the old it's it might be dried or withered I don't want it to just break so and o-rings really cheap so I just replaced the o-ring on there before I um, install it now as you can see all the uh, old hardware that I can use I put it on to um, the newer radiator so again, let's make it so that the orientation on some of these things are like the same way as um, that was we took it out from. So this is the piece with that 90 degree bend here. Um, that one of course is um, pointing sideways. Then this piece kind of points upwards a little bit. And there is that uh, temperature sensor there. Um, so now um, we're just going to put it back. So here's what it looks like now we're putting it back in. So we will just bolt this piece back up here. So the two bolts. Um, it doesn't fit 100% perfect, but it's it's good enough here for an aftermarket one. Now that these bolts are back in, we're going to go to the bottom and reconnect the hoses. Now we have the lower radiator hose back in, um, the transmission line cooler there, and then we plugged in this, um, not sure, we plugged this back in here. Um, we will just do the other hoses. Now that we got the um, cooler line back in, um, and also the temperature sensor plugged in. Uh, you just want to make sure that you plug back in the um, the wire holders on here. Make sure you clip it back in there. And then um, we will just move back to the top. Now you just want to put the wire back into the holders. So just move it the, and then just snap it back in just like that. So this wire here it's back on there and we'll plug in this too and we'll also put in the overflow hose we'll also do the upper radiator hose here too I'm gonna try to do it with one hand okay maybe I'm not okay there we go and then we will clamp this piece back in. And then we'll also plug in any um, connectors that we need to do here. Um, and this hose here, um, actually, we're going to take this one back out. I don't like the way this one looks here. So now, as you can see here, reservoir is there. We'll plug that one in. Upper radiator hose with the clamp back in a nice position there. All these connections are good. Go to the driver's side. This one looks a little bit better here. This one's connected. All the cable has been, um, looks like it's good there. So what we'll do is, I think we will just put the front bumper back on and just the lower piece there too. Now that we have this uh, black underbody centerpiece here that's in there, we will just put on the front bumper. 
Before putting the bumper um, fully on and screwing it, don't forget if you have fog lights, you're going to want to um, connect the fog lights on before putting the bumper in because it would be a hassle just to take it back off and then putting, plugging the fog lights back on. Now if this piece falls off, um, this is the orientation of how it should be. So this goes behind this grill right here and onto the bumper. So it looks just like that. Okay. So what it's going to do is it, it, it goes down and then locks onto the, um, the front bumper. Now, once you're able to get that screw in, the center, um, you tighten it. That is the screw that's in the front center of the grill. So once you get that one in, now what you can do is go to each of the side wheel well and just uh, bolt those uh, the, the side front bumpers in. This is how the bumper should fit before putting in all the bolts and the plastic clips. You can see here right there. This plastic the black plastic piece here, it sticks out a little bit with the inner fender well fender plastic piece going inside here. And looks just like that. Um, once you bolt it it should be that gap should be gone. But um, should be pretty good fit there. So we will just, uh, I believe there's a 10 millimeter that we are just going to bolt in there and then um, a couple of plastic clips here. We're so this is what it should look like. There is a plastic clip there here. It's been turned 90 degrees and um, it's been bolted the uh, front bumper has been bolted on and then we'll just do it on the other side also here is a look at the wheel well with the um, bumper um, bolted in there's the bolt up here it's a 10 millimeter and if you come down here it's that little plastic clip that we put in and then there's gonna be another piece here so once you put it in don't forget turn it 90 degrees just to lock it now we'll just bolt the rest of the lower piece of the front bumper here. It's going to be a few bolts as you remember from uh, taking it apart. To put this clip back on, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure the top of it is raised a little bit here. And you just push it down all the way in. Once it's in, what you can do is now just press on the tab down and that's it it's locked in place you can do that for all four of that now if you took out the battery of course it's time to put the battery back on if you didn't of course this part you can just disregard now that we put everything back together it's time to fill the um, radiator with coolant um, for for me personally, I like to use the OEM one, so I am just going to fill up with uh, the Toyota. So we fill the radiator and then there's still some left here. And then we also fill the um, overflow or the reservoir uh, halfway. What we're going to do is we're going to go inside the car and start the car. So we're going to set the heater control on max. And we will just, I guess we'll set it on there and then we'll start the car and let it warm up. Now we're watching for the air bubbles to come up. As you can see, there's a little bit of bubble. We're going to wait until all of it is going to be gone. Make sure to fill some more uh, coolant because it will take some, but there's still a little bit left here, so we'll just wait. And as you can see, there's still a little bit of bubble left in there. We're gonna wait until all the bubbles are gone. Now, once there's no more air bubbles in there, I, you're pretty much done, but um, 
for the next few days you want to just watch the overflow see if you need to fill up any more um, coolant or if there's too much in there then of course you want to take some out so um, next few days just watch uh, the level of this reservoir and uh, thanks for watching